Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am painting little cards today for Mother's Day. Thought these might be fun to play with. They're very simple, which I like. They take me not too long and I think they're pretty easy to follow along with. Today I'm normally using my Princeton brush, but today I'm using this number four Degato. I do have this linked in my supply list. They're very inexpensive, but I've been pretty happy with them. Just, I'm not sure how long they'll last, but I really like the bristles. They're, they're pretty firm, which I like, and they pop back into shape, meaning they're very snappy and uh, they're easy to work with, so I'm, I'm really enjoying them. I've painted a couple of these, and this is what we're going to be doing today. Like I said, just a very simple little floral. I buy these cards I've shared before. They fold here, and they come with a beautiful envelope that uh, has this very nice uh, organic edge on it, which I really love. And they're 140 pound, um, cold press, and they are made by Strathmore. And I just, I love painting on these. I, I use boxes of these when I'm uh, making cards for people. Let's go ahead and get started. I kept my palette pretty minimal. I'm using uh, an alizarin crimson for this red. And then I'm using some of the turquoise blues, Prussian blue for the blues, and cad yellow and cad orange for these kind of warmer colors. Um, and I'm using kind of this composition that I like that, uh, it's kind of like a V. So it, it comes out like this. I, th I tend to use that a lot. And then I'll be placing probably my, actually I'm going to lower that a bit because I want to be able to have my little sprays come out here. So I'm going to lower my flower. It'll probably be about right here. And then I'll have these sprays coming out. So it's got this fun little, like to me it's like an explosion and I will work with darks and light values and uh, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to start with my middle flower here and that is this alizarin crimson which I don't use too often. I typically use it in um, fall I happened to see it in there and I thought, oh, you know, I think I'm gonna use that. Let's just put it right here. So it's gonna get a little bit of these other colors blended into it and that'll be kind of interesting. It's a pretty earthy color. Let's go ahead and start here. I'm using the side of my brush. So let me get you, uh, let's see here, let me find a practice sheet, which is what I typically do, <laughs> and I can show you how I'm using the side of my brush to create these petals. I'm just going in with the point and then I press down and bring sideways, kind of like in this C curve. And this is how I'm going to be creating these petals. Okay, I will put those brush strokes in um, the little pre-work kit I, I have. Uh, let's go ahead and start here. So going in, just using the side of my brush, like this, might just tap in a little bit. Same here. Note all my petals are facing in towards the center. That one I'll make turning a little bit, something like that. There we go. Now while it's wet, I'm gonna go ahead and tap in with some of the darker version of that. 
I had a couple of you ask me, and I feel like I want to show that to you really quickly right now about these blobs. And I wanted to show you that. Let's pretend we are creating a daisy, African daisy petal. So point, press. Now when I pick up, notice how I get these little blobs. That just means I have too much water in there. And all you have to do is you can either blend it in or you can rinse your brush, tap it off and pick it up like that. Either way, either technique you use, that will soften out that blob you get, okay? All right, I've got a few of those here actually, but I'm kind of okay with them here. I could go in as long as I'm not going in with too much water and kind of blend it out. With it's, it's when this brush has too much water that you usually get these kind of funky things going on. Let's go into our CAD yellow. And I like CAD yellow and I like the CAD orange because um, it's very opaque, which is why they refer to it as CAD. Anything with the word CAD in front of it, there's CAD red, CAD blue, CAD orange, CAD yellow. That means it has this opaque quality to it. And then again, I'm using <clears throat> the side of my brush making sure if I feel I have too much water, just tapping it off. And then let's go in here. Point, pressing down the side of my brush. Point, pressing down the side of my brush. And then make them a little bit smaller as they get up because they're increasingly getting smaller there. There we go. I like that. And if you really want to, you could go in and tap in some of this darker color. I think it's really pretty. I'm going into my paint again. Just making sure I don't have too much water on there. And then I'm going to do another one coming out here. Just using the side of my brush getting a little bit smaller as I work up, just like that. Now I can go back in and just tap in with some of that darker orange, like so. Now I don't really want this to look like bunny ears, so I'm going to just add a few more in here, but ending smaller. Something like that. And then while that's wet, because I enjoy so much working wet and wet, I'm just going to go into this and hopefully get a little bit of bleed because I like that. Something like that. Just barely touching into the tips of these wet areas, I think is so pretty. And then let's just, using the tip of our brush, very light. And just drawing those down. Like so. Very, very light pressure. So already look at how beautiful. It's very simple. The next color I'm using is I'm blending a little bit of this turquoisey color with some Prussian blue. I want a very light value. And then I'm going to go in over here and just do some little, I think these are called blue bonnets. Something like that. There we go, maybe add some over here. Let's pick up a little bit more paint. 
Now I had a little bit too much water, so I picked some of that up. Something like that. And it's just drawing the interest. Now, because I have the blue in each corner, our eye kind of goes here and then it just stops. We want to bring it up. So our eye keeps moving, our viewer's eye keeps moving. And as you see, I always work in threes. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this just with two, but that's not my norm. And then let's go in there while it's wet and pick up some of our green, tapping off. And my hope is again, I get a little bit of that mix in there, like so, just like that. Okay, I think that's so pretty. Now I wanna go in here and just add in a little bit of filler. What I'm going to do, and if you see here too, a lot of times I use um, this Z pattern. Let me show you um, for composition because I think it's so interesting. So I will use either something like this or an S pattern because this moves your eyes so beautifully. I like both of those patterns and I tend to just automatically do that. So for here, for my composition, I did use this kind of V pattern, which I love because it draws your eye from here and kind of out into the picture, very expansive. And at the same time with my colors, I added in this Z pattern, which I think is really fun and interesting. And you wouldn't want to use a bright color like this blue in just one area or even two areas because our eye is gonna stop where here it kind of pulls you down here and then you almost come back through again. So that was my thoughts on that. I'm going to pick up a very washy color of this green, meaning a very light value. So it's very watery. And then I'm just going to go in and add in some little touches like this, kind of in the background almost because they're very light. Just something like that. And now actually while that's wet, I will go into my darker value and just kind of touch in and let it naturally spread. Because this is wet, it's going to do that. Not pretty. So I've got my three elements again, like so. And let's just create a couple regular leaves now, meaning kind of the standard leaf. Like that. Now I might go for a darker value, meaning I'm going to have more paint and something like that. Maybe just right here. I think that's pretty. There we go. So I'm playing with these values. I'm changing up how much water I have. Kind of like this white space here. Maybe just add in a few things like this. And then I think I'll get a very light value of that green. So I go back to this very watery and I'm just going to put in a couple little leaves in the background there, something like that. 
I'm going to add a little bit darker here again because that really blended in while this is wet. Just like that. And then this, I don't like these hard edges, so I'm gonna go in with, I cleaned my brush and it's just damp. It's not real wet. And I'm just going to go around these outer edges and blend that a little bit, okay? Now, if you see, I've kind of got this element up here, this element here, and we want to make sure it's in more of threes and it's, again, this zigzaggy pattern. So I'm going to put some darker areas up in this one as well, something like that, okay? So now our eye is kind of traveling around and not getting stuck anywhere. And I think that's really kind of it. Um, I don't wanna to add too much. I really wanted this to be rather simple. I think what I will do is go in and add the center of this red flower here. So I'm using my Payne's Gray and just going to go in and tap that in. And I think I'm done. I wanted to share this simple little flower with you. Um, I think they're really fun and beautiful and make such a pretty simple card. I hope you play with this. I will put all of the um, supplies in my description. I will also create a little tutorial kit for you, which is my pre-work. As you can see, I do lots of playing to kind of get to what I want to paint and practice it first. Uh, I have a swatch that I practiced the colors on and then just some of the brush strokes that I use. And you will get this card, I'll sign it. And I put the name of the tutorial down here, the date, and so you get um, the card, the swatch with the Winsor Newton colors, and my brush strokes that I use. So you can come back to the tutorial and watch it and kind of follow along and you actually have the painting in front of you. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to my channel. I hope you subscribe and I see you again and I will see you all soon. Thank you.